Hello, hello, and welcome to Let's Chat Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. This week's episode is dedicated to Mental Health Awareness Week. I'm pleased to be joined by some lovely guests. Would you guys please introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about what you do? Hi guys, my name is Kwame. Um, I am a pharmacist. I've worked in psychiatry or mental health for about seven years now, and I'm currently based at a mental health hospital in North London. So my name is Rachel and I'm a social work student. So I'm doing my master's in social work at the moment. I work in the Peru as part of my placement and then on my days off, I work as a social work assistant in a secure service. Okay, thank you, Rachel. So it sounds like we're all in the mental health profession. Um, I'm a youth support worker. Um, mental health specialist is my area. So um, work with young people on a one-to-one basis. Got the right people here to have this conversation. Then. <laughs> Looks like in it. Good company. <laughs> Looks like it. And how are you all feeling today? Yeah, good. Good, good. Mm. Just had a, a good service, powerful word. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling blessed. Mm. Great. Well, Same here. You. I'm okay. I'm I'm really pleased to be here today. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us. So um, I know mental health is you know a bit of a touchy subject for some reason. Mm. Um, there's still a bit of a stigma attached to it. But as Christians, what would you say our awareness of mental health is? I would say our awareness um, has grown mm. and has definitely improved within the last few years. Um, I remember probably about five years ago and before that, if someone mentioned, you know, the words mental health, it would almost be a taboo, yeah. you know, and you'd just be told, you know, oh, just go and pray about it. That person is not serious. But um, I feel like there's become more of an awareness in the church that actually the prevalence for mental health issues you know it's it's real it's out there and it's amongst our people it's not just something that you see in the news mm. um i also feel the church has become more accommodating mm. um as well to, in what ways i would say um there's a provision within the church for those who are undergoing mental health issues um so previously there may not have been that um mm. but now for example at tbc there are particular counselors who have you know training in the area of mental health, who you can be directed to for counselling and that kind of thing. So by making that provision there, it shows mm-hmm. that the church is moving forward in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I still think there's a lot more we can do as individuals, Christian individuals, in terms of you know trying to remove the stigma mm-hmm. around uh, mental health conditions and being supportive, being that that ear to listen to people's problems and knowing where to direct people to. So yeah. even if you don't have you know, uh, knowledge of mental health and you're not experienced in giving people counseling and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, mm-hmm. just it's knowing tough. where I can direct someone, whether mm-hmm. it's a GP, whether it's a, a charity, whether it's a, you know, a counselor, knowing that, I think once we get over that and a lot of Christians are equipped in directing people, I think we'll be making good steps forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I have a question. Another question is, um, growing up, what would you say like your understanding of mental health was? Because I would say for me personally, uh, I had no understanding really about it, but I definitely was experiencing it mm-hmm. to a deep level where um, I wish it was a conversation that was spoken about a lot more. So it felt less isolating because mental health does feel, you know, isolating and it has, like you said, that stigma, a bit of shame attached to it yeah. so like growing up what was your you know experience or understanding of mental health um i think for me like if you saw someone on the road kind of talking to themselves you would almost not like cross the over to the other side of the road but almost mm. want to at the same time mm-hmm. and people with mental health issues we didn't know about the ones going on inside sort of the anxiety yeah. the depression and all the quiet ones we kind mm-hmm. of saw someone you know outside talking to themselves, taking their clothes off. On the other spectrum. Yeah, Yeah, the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Um, So we didn't really speak much about it. And I think, like you said, if we knew more about it, but then also did our parents know what was going on? Mm -hmm. Was the diagnosis there? Do you know what I mean? Because they've only recently brought in the, like, you know, the diagnosis um, of DSM and the way that they do it and they keep changing it. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was something that was there, if the provision was there, but even in mainstream sort of media and everything, we're only starting to have the conversation in the last 10 years about it openly. So um, 
I don't think it, that that provision was there, but had it have been, it would have normalised, you know, talking about your fears and not being seen as weak, for example, if you yeah. had, you know, an issue with something that, you know, you felt like, oh, I'm really nervous about this and, uh, you know, I've talked about it and talked about it and I've, you know, prayed about it, but it's not going. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. Rather than dealing with it yourself, if you're able to go out, if you were able to, you know, know where exactly to go, it would have made all of these things so much more easier. Not to say it won't come, but at least you'll have a much better way to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I, I can identify with you on the, the knowledge gap when mm. we were growing up. So I lived too, uh, not too far from uh, Lambert Hospital, which is a mental health hospital. Mm-hmm. And every time we used to drive past, and someone would be out there perhaps talking to themselves mm-hmm. um, or, or, or doing something which may have been deemed irregular. My dad would point at the person and say, look, look, you see, he, he's there because his wife has divorced him or, or something like that. So I, that's what I used to associate mental health issues with that, you know, someone goes through a traumatic time and mm-hmm. then, you know, all of a sudden they start talking to themselves, start ripping off their clothes mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So I had no idea. Um, about mental health issues until I had a family member who um, experienced um, drug-induced psychosis. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, you know, firsthand, then my eyes started to open up Mm -hmm. about actually what mental health illness was. It became personal. Mm -hmm. It became personal. And then, you know, growing up, when you, you, you come across, you know, people who are, they want to try new things, um, then they start to experience yeah. drug-induced psychosis. Mm-hmm. Then you're actually seeing, you know, the people that you used to go to school with, yeah. all of a sudden they're being admitted into a, a psychiatric hospital yeah. um, for treatment. Then, um, you know, I think it was more so as I worked in psychiatry, I began to learn about things like depression, anxiety, um, which were things that were going on before, but... Yeah. We just didn't know about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and now you have young people experiencing those things. Whereas back in the day, you know, if you went to your mum and said, oh, you know, mum, I'm depressed. Your mum would say, <laughs> come on, let's go to yeah. your room or, or, or something like that. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Um, what is depression? Yeah. What is depression? What do you, you, what do you, what do you have to be depressed how, about? Yeah, yeah. How do you be yeah. depressed? There's food mm-hmm. on the table, your clothes, you don't work, you don't, you don't do anything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that I think that's a bit of an ignorant statement yeah. because mm-hmm. even just what we're seeing now you know children being locked in their houses yeah. you know for long periods of time um, they can only go out for certain periods mm-hmm. um, and just being in that small confinement yeah. with your parents who are probably working from home on zoom can't pay you the mm-hmm. attention that you need that that will have an effect on your it's mental t- health yeah. as a child yeah. um, but that that knowledge gap that was there previously Right now, I think that that gap has become smaller, yeah. and um, parents and young people, uh, older adults, are becoming more familiar mm. with, with the mental health issues that are prevalent. Yeah, I would agree. I think even with some young people that I work with, their parents are getting educated mm. about you know their um, their young their child's condition, um, just like the same way maybe if your child had you know diabetes, yeah. um, you'd learn what. Um, your child needs in terms of like their insulin when they need to take it so um, just to help but I know you mentioned like young people and children being locked up Um, you know this pandemic can be defined as like a trauma for a lot of people Um, have you seen like an increase of well young people and just adults as well in mental health services I have Um, I would definitely say you know, just due to COVID, anyway, mm-hmm. bed pressures yeah. have gone up um, and there's been, you know, demand for beds. Um, there's been frequent admissions, more frequent mm-hmm. admissions mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, than ever before in, during my time anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, not only are you having those people who have a mental health illness already yeah. um, seeking services, wanting to come back into hospital, but there's people who are being mm-hmm. newly diagnosed yeah. Yeah. with mental health illnesses. Yeah. So that's just, you know, increased the numbers um, marginally. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's definitely been a higher rate of admissions. Yeah. As we were talking about young people who have never experienced something like this, you know, they don't even know how to manage their symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, they've been trying to seek GP services. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can't see your GP face to face. So they're mm-hmm. referring them 
to to hospitals mm -hmm. they're coming in being yes. triaged and that and that kind of thing yeah. so there has been an increased number of admissions um with older people mm -hmm. and also with with young people definitely that's true yeah. i don't know if you've experienced the i've same seen thing the as well. same so we had so many more admissions when the um pandemic first hit i remember for one case we couldn't even tell the person that this is what you've done and this is what could um, potentially happen and it was just sad like he didn't even know where he was and why he was there but because of what was going on with him and the like the period he was going mm -hmm. through in his mental health we couldn't say anything but even for children for their carers like mental health issues are being either exasperated or as you said they're coming in with newly diagnosed issues and we're having to become very creative in the way that we deal with them now because mm. there isn't enough like the system is breaking it's at yeah. breaking point and I remember like when you know I work quite closely with CAMS and they said when the lockdown lifted and children came back to school although the system was already breaking once they returned to school the amount of cases and issues that was you know re um you know kind of came up that didn't wasn't there before so mm. like it was just so much and it's been such a like a hard time for both the staff for the people going through it and also for services all around mm. so yeah it's definitely had a big impact this covid yeah. on everything especially mental health definitely i mean it's been a huge roller coaster of you're out of school then you're back in yeah. and then you're out and then you're back in yeah. there's a lot of uncertainty as well yeah. these young people especially if they're having their g they're going through their gcse year yeah. um some of them are like, am I taking my GCSE this year or am I not? Um, I think it's a lot of pressure on their minds and just not having their usual things that they would use to cope. Whereas yeah. like maybe going to a youth club or seeing their friends yeah. or even just like engaging in sports yeah. or different extracurricular activities, yeah. Yeah. all of that is shut down. So those things that were their coping mechanisms before no yeah. longer, yeah. no are no longer there. So yeah. it's definitely very, very difficult. Like imagine being a, a third year or you know you're in your last year of university mm -hmm. about to complete your your dissertation or your yeah. exams and then being told that actually um we're not sure what's going to happen or we're going to have to put things on hold yeah. due to the pandemic yeah you know you're thinking about hold on i need to graduate so that i can get a job maybe you got a job lined up and they're waiting for you to start in a few months mm -hmm. maybe maybe you haven't and you're being told things are going to be delayed What's going to happen? Am or you're I still, seeing everyone go on furlough. So it's like, you know, yeah. is, there, is there even still opportunities <laughs> yeah. for me mm -hmm. after studying after for this job. long yeah, yeah. period? Yeah. So, you know, all, all kinds of emotions and thoughts are going to be in people's heads. Yeah. Um, you know, I, someone said the other day that, you know, even coming to church, you know, they're a bit, they're feeling a bit low because they're not able to find a wife in, in <laughs> church because everyone's, everyone's wearing a mask. <laughs> So you can't even you see, can't see their full face. Yeah. Their full face. You can't even interact with with women yeah. or that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So he, he's That's thinking. Tough. He's thinking. I mean, fair point. You know, his love life or you know his marriage mm -hmm. is going to be delayed. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we, we might sit down and laugh about these things, but mm -hmm. these are some real issues oh, yeah. that people think about that affects yeah. their mental health. Yeah. I I would hundred percent agree. Uh, what do you think? You know, as Christians or being in this church, what what do you think we can do? What, what more can we do, I should say, to, you know, help bring more awareness and to, you know, keep this conversation going, even mm -hmm. direct people for, to the right help and um, create that support for those who are struggling with their mental health? I think um, this is the first step. I mean, right, sort of having this conversation. And as Kwame's yeah. already mentioned, there is loads of support in church. But I think just as there's going to be a mental health week, or this is mental health week, sorry, um, sort of in the community, we can have one at church as well, mm. where we kind of have an open conversation about the issues that are going on, especially related to COVID right now. Mm. There's so much going on with people feeling isolated, social isolation, people feeling exclu excluded. And, you know, for our young people who have like been told to shield, that's a real big issue. Mm. So we could have like open conversations about these, um, you know, issues and, you know, invite people to come and share their experiences with no judgment and personalise the things that we, you know, do to suit the person's needs. So my needs in mental health are different to yours. 
So mm-hmm. let, let's have a conversation and normalize it. Yeah. That, you know, I might feel depressed and you might feel depressed, but your depression might, you know, it's it different. Might, it might not look the same. Exactly. That's the thing. Depression. Yeah. I can be outside here laughing like anything mm-hmm. and feel so sad inside, whereas you might come in and, you know, have that, you know, low demeanor and yeah. all of that. Mm-hmm. So we can't, we can't say who's got what, but let's, let's have an open conversation about it so that people are comfortable to share with us what they're going through. And also then, we can, you know, have a like, have a chat line. They have chat lines out there, like, you know, um, is it what's the one um, for the children? Just, um, child? Shout, yeah, yeah. Text line, shout. They've got all yeah. sorts of stuff. So we mm. could, you know, start with something like that. Get people, you know, have a, an accessible sort of service in church where you can get good advice. It's Christ, um, Christ advice as well, and also it's advice that's always available. It's non judgmental. That's one of the first ways I think we can you know, get this get this moving and get people comfortable in touch with how they're feeling and also to know that there is help and love out there, especially in the church. Yeah, I think I think he's made some, some valid points. There definitely is room to do some work mm. around um, education. Um, and, you know, some churches have started doing that already. We've had mental health sessions here yeah. where we've had people come in and talk to us um, to give us more information mm-hmm. about uh, mental health conditions mm-hmm. and how they can be treated yeah. and what support is available out there. So I think more of those yeah. um, educational sessions, yeah. more open conversations, as you're saying. Yeah. Um, and I, I, a firm believer that there's a place for medical intervention mm-hmm. um, in mental health. I won't deny that. Yeah. The same way, you know, in physical health, you know, there's a place for you know the medics and mm. the nurses, the pharmacists and whoever. Yeah. There's also a place in mental health as well. Yeah. Um, but I also think as Christians, as believers, we also know the power of our God yeah. and you know nothing is impossible for him. Yeah. Um, and he hasn't given us a spirit of, of fear. Um, he's given us a, a, a spirit of power, love and of sound mind. Right. So I think we also need to pray yeah. um, as, as a collective, as a body, yeah. Um, against mental health illnesses, pray yeah. for our brothers and sisters who are undergoing uh, mental health challenges. Right. Um, I think getting that balance right, mm-hmm. because what's happened in the past is that you know it's been very heavily focused on the spiritual side of it mm-hmm. and getting that you know supernatural intervention where actually God has given the doctors and the medical professionals yeah. the wisdom mm-hmm. to right. be able to treat those conditions. Well, so yeah. it's like that example that. I, was telling you about you know mm. if you break your leg yeah you know if you break your leg you have surgery but you pray before you pray that god you know uses um the surgeons that he touches their hands that yeah. you he anoints the place before and you pray that you know there's healing for your leg um but you also do the exercises that yeah. the doctors um subscribe you to do 100 percent. so you use i think like you said that balance is, right. is so needed yeah right. and, and you do get to a point where you know, perhaps the medical doctors don't know what's mm-hmm. wrong or don't know what the cause is or don't even know what treatment to offer you. Maybe they've tried a, a number of things and it, and it mm-hmm. hasn't worked. Um, in my line of work, I've seen that happening. And in that situation, then you you may want to tip the scale yeah. and then say, you know what, the God that I serve, nothing is impossible greater for than, him. Mm-hmm. It's, nothing's greater than him. Yeah, so therefore, you, than you know, you, you focus more on the divine intervention that's and right. praying mm-hmm. and asking God to step in. Yeah, 100%. Mm. That's great. So what advice would you give to, you know, there are going to be people from, I think, a range of different ages watching watching this. What advice would you give yeah. to them in terms of um, their mental, like managing with their mental health and looking for support as well? I think for, um, for young people um, to let somebody know, Mm-hmm. Um, speak to your parents, speak to a trusted like, friend, adult, anybody, even your youth leader at church, your teacher, anybody, just let them know that something's going on or I feel this way, I felt like this for a while or I've started to feel like this a bit more frequently than I'm used to and I feel, you know, if it makes you feel scared, it makes you feel uncomfortable, however it is, speak to somebody. There are so many resources out there. Um, if you're a bit older and you're able to speak to your GP, have a chat with them and let them know. But also the pastors in church are available as well. Let somebody know that this is how I feel and don't think that any issue or any sort of symptom is too small, too silly. Yeah. And also speak to God about it. Um, it's very important that we understand as young people that 
nothing is too small. God does. God cares about everything. He's taken the time to know every hair on our head. Mm-hmm. Therefore, he cares how you feel, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. And also for older people, if even if you're a parent, I'm a parent myself. And one of the things that I do, I pray a lot. I lay hands on my children and I pray for them as well. But also taking time out for yourself. If you find that you're feeling overwhelmed, looking at ways that you can organize your time. So taking practical steps. But if you find that it's getting too much, speak to your spiritual leader. Speak to someone who you find is a mentor for you. But also, if you need, speak to seek some medical advice, as Palmer has been saying. Don't think that anything like, you know, it's not going to help or someone's going to think that I'm not able to manage or oh, if I say I've got mental health issues, maybe the social services will get involved. The best thing and the bravest thing any, anybody can do for themselves is to say, I need help. And that's the first step, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. So so many gems in your eyes. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the, on the head. Thank the you. first step is to, to speak out. And I think that's why they've got the charities such as, you know, Shouts. Mm-hmm. That's why they, they call it Shout yeah. because yeah. the first thing to do is to talk out talk about, about it. it. For a lot of the mental health illnesses, the first um, method of treatment is psychological intervention, yeah. talking therapies, mm-hmm. um, and not necessarily medication. Yeah. So definitely vocalising how you're feeling yeah. um, to either a specialist or a, a, a trusted um, person, mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's definitely something that I would recommend yeah. to young people and to try and do it as soon as possible mm-hmm. um, because these things can develop over time yeah. and I know for myself sometimes I can get to a place where I'm overthinking about things and you can just you know lock yourself in the room and just be in your thoughts oh, and yeah. um you know you're, you're you're thinking the worst when actually the situation isn't that bad mm-hmm. by just by speaking to someone the person can help you come up with solutions mm-hmm. um, yeah. they may be able to identify with how you're feeling and then share with you maybe how they've overcome that same challenge or that same situation Mm -hmm. but yeah it just goes back to speaking Speaking, up yeah i just wanted to add as well i do a lot of journaling Mm -hmm. um it's a part of my work and my role sort of reflecting Mm -hmm. and so writing down okay so this is what happened today this is how it made me feel. Yeah. This is how I might deal with it in future. And this is the, these are the things that I need to do to make sure that the next time when I hit that or the next time that comes up again, I can deal with it better. And sometimes it's getting it out of there and putting it on paper. Yeah. It helps yeah. you to put things into perspective because sometimes, like you were saying, you might sit there and think and think and think and, oh, this happened today and it made me feel like this. And, oh, my goodness, how is it going to make me feel tomorrow? Get it on paper if you're if you're the type to. Put it on your phone. Type it out. And if you're not, if you want to send it to someone you trust, this is how I felt today. This is what I went through. It keeps someone else in the journey with you, but also it keeps you sort of going through what you've, you know, what you've done and looking at it as an objective, like with objective eyes, rather than it being all here and consuming every single thing you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of one of the themes for uh, Mental Health Awareness Week, which is coming up, mm. is nature, and mm. there's actually a place. Um, for nature when you're talking about therapy mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you guys have maybe perhaps you know gone for a walk in the park mm-hmm. and just admired the scenery and just you know done breathing exercises those kind yeah, of things yeah, yeah. can just kind of take your Grand mind you. off things mm-hmm. and just relax you yeah. so that's also something to think about there's, there's a number of um, nature groups and nature projects that are going on yeah. during mental health week in yeah. the community mm-hmm. so you can get in touch um, yeah. with, with your local charity if it's mined or you can even ask your GP yeah. to see if they're aware of any and you can definitely you know I know there's groups that are doing for example drawing group outside mm-hmm. where you know you, you just focus on something mm-hmm. else for that half an hour colouring yeah, yeah. 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 Do for an hour do some yeah. colouring yeah. and that kind of thing and, and, it, yeah. and it helps yeah. Yeah. Those, those kind of things help there's um, exercising as well mm. um, eating well making mm-hmm. sure that you're um, sleeping enough as well all those practical things you can do for yourself as well that yeah. can be quite you know drinking a lot of water i mm-hmm. think that's one thing that we kind of forget in the you know as you're working going to here going there um but the other thing that i was going to add to your point kwame was that if you can't get to the park you can do a little bit of gardening at home mm-hmm. get your little plants at home and like just repot in and gardening has so many benefits for the mental health so there's so many things that we can do within our communities and even within our homes just to help ourselves. But if it does get too much, then definitely talk to somebody. Yeah. yeah. One, one thing I will add is, you know, some people's uh, 
depression or low mood sometimes is fueled by social media. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you feel like that or you identify that, take a break. Yeah. Just take a step away yeah. from social media because there's so much that we take in, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. from our iPads, phones, even from you know TV shows, mm-hmm. YouTube, like even YouTube adverts. I was saying to my missus the other day, like you want to watch a video on YouTube <laughs> and then you've got a video of someone saying, I caught my husband cheating uh, <laughs> three months ago. Yeah. And and those things, yeah, yeah, although you skip it, that three, four seconds that you watched it for, it can sow a seed in yeah. your mind if you're not careful. Yeah. So you just need to take a, a break from all those things yeah. and, and just clear your mind. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Like you said, you know. Our minds are so receptive to negative information. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So like you said, the thoughts that you're having, mm-hmm put them on paper we'll speak to someone and um yeah just just try and move away from from that negative energy yeah it is a lot about you know awareness of how you're feeling how you're experiencing life um and i really love that you guys touched on speaking to someone and having that support even speak speaking to someone speaking to god especially being vulnerable because i think sometimes you think oh this is, you know, this is too minor, like, God doesn't want to hear this. But it's like, no, actually, he does. That is part of that relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. That is part of, you know, having that journey with him. So yeah. I think, you know, you guys have touched on some really important parts and great tips. Great tips. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no worries. And indeed, you know, there's times where we don't feel like coming to God or even... Um, coming to church mm-hmm. but the bible teaches us that the joy of the lord is our strength mm-hmm. and you know just being in his in his presence and you know just thinking about all that he's done for you mm-hmm. up until this day mm-hmm. things like that will encourage you yeah so i also say to our young people those who are undergoing mental health challenges mm-hmm. you know draw closer to god mm-hmm. um you know if, if that's you know by coming to church mm-hmm. um if it's by being part of the fellowship home group meetings, yeah. Bible studies, just, you know, get closer to God. Mm-hmm. And and by doing so, you know, he'll let you know that he's got you yeah. and everything's going to be well. Yeah. I also wanted to add to what you've just said there. Um, there's a few Bible apps that give you the opportunity to do like a gratitude or um, prayers answered list. So you can mm-hmm. make your list of prayers and prayers answered list. And just going back to what you were saying, when you look at the things that God has done for you, mm-hmm. it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. And sometimes writing it down helps you to remember mm-hmm. the things that, you know, this is what I prayed for before and God's done all of that. And if you like tick boxes, I do. I like to make a list of my to-dos and it mm-hmm. gives you that satisfaction. Yeah. And just as looking at a prayer, prayer list that, you know, I had this on the prayer list, now I can tick it off and put it onto this one. These are just little practical steps that, like my mum might find silly, but mm-hmm. for me, it's a good reminder. practical example or reminder of exactly what, you know, what I was going through before and where I am now. And just to keep my faith going in God to know that he answers prayers. No, nothing's too small. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, God, I've got a headache. That's that's a prayer in, its, in, its, in itself. You don't need yeah. to go and, like, you know, kneel down somewhere. If you're walking down the street and you start to feel a certain way, like, God, I feel a bit anxious. People are watching mm-hmm. you. Just talk to God about it. It's a conversation prayer at the end of the day. So, yeah. Nothing's too small. Thank you. No, that was great. Thanks, guys. Um, That is the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Please remember to like, share, and comment. Tell us how you feel about this episode. Also, remember that there are charities such as Mind and Samaritans available to you. And also, if you'd like to speak to a pastor, uh, please reach out to the church office. We'll put the number at the end of the video. Um, and you can speak to Pastor Steve or Deacon Deaconess Olivia. Thank you so much again. Take care. Bye. Bye.